did you all bring a fruit? Huh. I'll just keep it in front of you. So first we will do a 10 minutes meditation. It's an old meditation. Those who have been with me in Yoga Vashishta have done it probably. Yeah, those who are not in Yoga Vashishta must have done it maybe in Japaji Sahib. If you attended either of those sessions. If not, it's okay. New meditation for you. Do it with eyes closed. But in that meditation, I ask you questions. So answer as if I'm in your room, okay? Just answer as if I'm in the room and you're answering the question to me, okay? But keep your eyes closed, okay? Relax the body. Be completely here. Totally become aware of your mind. Very aware. And start emptying your mind. This is not important right now. That is also not important right now. Empty the mind one by one. There is no room here for thoughts, no room for emotions. Pack the ego outside when you pack your shoes. No room for the thoughts of the past. Keep them out. Focus completely here in the present. Empty your mind of any thoughts of future. Don't even think about what will happen next in this meditation. Just empty. Empty the mind. Empty the mind like an empty room. There is no furniture there. Nothing. Nobody home. Now break the walls of the room and just expand that emptiness. This that you are experiencing now is the isness.
Is it an object? Can okay, I answer me yes or no? Mm -hmm. Was it just born? No. Was it always there? Yes. Is that you are experiencing? Can it be destroyed? No. Does it have a form? No. Does it have a size? No. Check, maybe there is a limit. Is there a limit? No. Can fire destroy it? No. What about water? Can it wash it away? Mm -hmm. yeah. So none of the elements can destroy this? Mm -hmm. Didn't you? Mm -hmm. This that does not have a size, shape, that you did not create, that was not born, that cannot be destroyed, but yet it was always there. Is this something you are dreaming of? No. So it's not a dream state, correct? Is it a sleep state? No. And can you call it a waking state? No. So it is something beyond waking, dream and sleep. You can talk from here. That means you can take actions from here. Is that correct? Yes. yes. That means you can work from here. Now, check. Is there any hatred in it? Mm -hmm. Any jealousy? Mm -hmm. Any greed? Mm -hmm. Any delusion. Mm -hmm. So none of those vices are here. Correct? Now look deeper, even deeper. Is there something like happiness or sadness? Any of the opposites? Mm
Did you all get it? The background of business. Yeah. yeah. It is the same as the sense of I am that Nisargadatta Maharaj speaks about. So did you recognize that background? Yes, the background of isness, the background of silence, the void. Yes, everyone. Good. So that is chapter 5. Without experiencing it, if you read the chapter, it is just words. You've done that on the Dvaitam path. Yeah. On Advaita path, we experience it first, get a glimpse of it, taste it a little bit and then whatever words the scripture says, we read. We don't read unless we have tasted it. So did you all get a glimpse of the isness 100%? Yes? Okay. It is the same thing that happens every morning. Have you noticed when you awaken in the morning? From Some people get up from deep sleep state directly to waking and some people get up from a dreaming state and then into waking. So when you wake up from the dreaming and then into waking, it's difficult to see it because it's left behind, you know, long ago. When you went from your deep sleep to your dreaming. But for those people who get up from deep sleep and directly into waking, they get that glimpse very easily. First, there is that absolute blankness. There's nothing. It's silent. It's like a void. It's like a sense of being. It's the verb to be. It is not some supreme being we are talking about here not animal and human being, no being. The verb to be, hona. Yeah? In that way, there's a sense of being, the sense of existing. Hone ka ehsas. Yeah? So when you wake up from your deep sleep, if you're lucky enough to come into the waking state, you've still not opened your eyes, but you're awake. There is this sense of being first, an I am, yeah, or an isness. It's like a blank background. There is nothing there. The thoughts have not yet arisen. The feelings have not yet arisen. There is no sensation yet. You've just transitioned or just started transitioning from the deep sleep to waking up. That is called Sat in Sanskrit. S-A-T, Sat or Isness. It's like a complete blankness. There is nothing there. Nothing. There's just a sense of amnes. There's not even an I yet. Yeah, when it is explained by Nisargadatta in the first chapter, he's talking to an ignorant person who is very consumed in his sense of I am the body. So he speaks it as I am, but there is no I there. It is just like an isness, an amness, a presence, a recognition of being. Yes. Then, even before you've opened your eyes, because it is devoid of mental objects, first a hazy, hazy kind of thought or image will come up. Then the sensation of the heaviness of the body comes up where you start recognizing, I am that body lying down in bed. You know, that recognition comes, not in these words. Yeah? It's a recognition of the body, the heaviness of the body in the bed. Maybe the breath also. 
then maybe you start like feeling that pain in the neck because you were sleeping all night in the, in an awkward position and you feel that little pain or little discomfort there and then the first thought emerges and then more thoughts emerge yeah and then you open your eyes then perception of sight sound taste touch smell floods you yes so he's talking about the background the black background some of you see it as black some of you see it as white it doesn't matter yeah however you recognize it as actually you're not seeing seeing with your eyes hopefully you recognize that yeah it's just a sense of being yeah. so now let's look at what atmananda has to say about this sense of being this background yeah um please don't um, make it a fixed black background that's why i got a black background also and i got a white one also so whatever works for you is fine yes don't get fixated in an idea and don't start looking for the color black or looking for the color white there is no such color this has caused a lot of confusion on the dwaitam path and people have started looking for white light and blue light and stuff like that yeah that's why i put both so that there is no confusion everybody perceives it in their own personal way because you create your own personal world yes so this background is what we are talking about in this chapter very clear okay so let's look at the pdf now chapter 5 दृश्य दिंते पश्चातलम द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्टिव वर्ल्ड वर्स 1 शब्दम स्पर्शम रसम रूपम गंधम इनिवयुन्नु मे आधारमुनु कूडादे दानी निलकिल्ल निश्चयम साउंड form touch taste and smell can never exist by themselves they always need a background to support them yeah so now we are going to understand this experientially some of us already recognize it because of our so many and number of experiments but some of us need again a revision so keep your fruit in front of you on the table put your book and pen aside you can write your experiment later when you repeat the video during the week yeah right now do the experiment keep your pen and book aside put the fruit in front of you on the table yeah. let's close our eyes close the eyes empty the mind empty completely empty no thoughts nothing no room for anything just the black or the white background or colorless transparent background however you like it just isness now this background is there an inside and outside in it you can nod your head so i you know okay there is it is it really a background just like a single screen behind more like an infinite space all around yeah not a background background but okay for beginners who don't get it it's a background do you recognize it as infinity itself do you see how there is no time there 
no space, no causation means no cause and effect, no causality. There is no karma there, no karma bhalam there. Do you recognize it is devoid of mental objects? Mental objects are perceptions, sensations, feelings and thoughts. Is it devoid of them? Yes? It's just like a silent void, an ocean of silence, an ocean of void. Do you recognize in this ocean of void, you hear Ekta's voice arising and falling? Can you pinpoint a fixed location where Ekta's voice is? Point it out. Is there an in and outside the ocean of silence? Do you recognize there is no outside? Yeah. So, sound arises and falls in this ocean of void, in this background of void. Sound needs that background as a support, as an adhar. Now keeping your eyes closed, touch the fruit in front of you. You can keep it closer so you're not bending down. Just hold it. Do you recognize that the sensation of touch arises and disappears in this infinite ocean of silence? In this background, can you pinpoint a fixed location where the sensation is in this infinite ocean, in this infinite background? Is there an inside and outside? So this infinite ocean of silence is the adhar, the support, that ground which is required for an arising like the sensation, whatever the sensation is, soft or rough on your fingers right now. You can place the fruit down. Empty your mind of all thoughts, all images. See if you can smell the fruit. Keeping your eyes closed. Don't open your eyes. Do you notice that the smell arises and falls in this infinite ocean of void? In this background. Can you pinpoint a location of the smell? Is there an inside or outside where you can figure out, okay, the smell is in here and not out there? There is no inside, no outside. It's just somewhere. Somewhere. Those who have a fruit that can be eaten right now and tasted, you can taste your fruit with closed eyes.
Notice where does that taste arise and fall. Can you pinpoint a location of the taste? Some of you might point to your tongue. But that is again a concept, no? Body is a perception. Empty your room again of all thoughts, all perceptions, all ideas and just sense the flavor. There is just the flavor arising and falling on a background. Now, keeping your eyes closed, raise the fruit to your eye level. Don't open your eyes yet. Just raise it to your eye level and slowly open your eyes and only look at the fruit directly. Do you notice that the form arose in the infinite ocean or background? That same infinite ocean that is there with eyes closed is there with eyes open. It doesn't disappear. Yes, it is the same ocean of awareness. The same ocean of knowingness. The same ocean of consciousness that is also the background. Yeah. Therefore, we arrive at that conclusion that Atmananda says in the first verse that sight, sound, smell, taste, touch can never exist by themselves. They need a background to support them. Yes? Very, very clear. Supremely clear. Yeah. So now... You have to take this exercise into your open eye daily routine. I should be able to recognize the consciousness, the awareness, the knowingness or this infinite ocean of silence or existence. Whatever word you like, doesn't matter. It is there with my eyes open. How can it be there only with eyes closed and when I open my eyes it disappears? It cannot. It is the same ocean of isness. And where was the source? Right in here. It's not in the outside external world. Yeah. So it, everything is my awareness. Everything is my consciousness. There is nothing outside my consciousness. There is nothing outside my awareness. I have no proof of anything existing outside of my awareness or consciousness or knowingness. No? I don't have any direct experiential proof. I can create hypothesis and assumptions that is different. No? That is all intellectual. We are talking about direct experiential proof. Very clear? So the word that Atmananda uses for the background is Adharam. It's also uh, Hindi, Marathi, I think lots of local languages use this word Adhar. So the Adhar, the support, the background of every perception, sensation, feeling, thought, basically of every arising is the isness, the sense of I am. Or amnes, or the witness. It is not different. Different, different names only. We move on to verse two now. Adharam kanu vanvaya, 
காரணங்கள் இலொன்னினும் இன்னா தீனறியாதோரோ தீரதின்னு கொடுக்கையாம் The background cannot be seen by the sense organs. Names are usually given to it without its nature being known. Yeah. Now close your eyes again. Again empty out the mind. Empty, 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 empty it out of all perceptions, all sensations, all thoughts, all feelings. Empty. Back to the emptiness. Eyes closed. Can you recognize the background again? The Adharam again now? Are you using your eyes to perceive it right now? No. Are you using your ears to perceive it right now? No. Are you using your nose to perceive it right now? No. Are you using your tongue to perceive it right now? No. Are you using your skin or body to perceive this infinite ocean of awareness, knowingness, background? No. The background cannot be seen by the sense organs. can open your eyes now. So that's the first line. That the background cannot be seen by the sense organs. That Adharam is not something that can be perceived by the mind. Now do you know why so many scriptures and masters keep saying, oh it is not perceptible by the mind and you keep wondering then how am I going to get it? Didn't you get it without the mind now? <laughs> Yes, very clear. Yeah, 100% clear everybody. Okay, super. They give so many names and so many scriptures came out in so many thousands of years. So there's a list of names for it. Yeah, Brahman, Atman, Isness, Pure Consciousness, Primordial Awareness, God, Supreme Being. Uh, ultimate reality, supreme truth, shunyata, emptiness, purnata, uh, fullness, then holy spirit, khuda, hukum, etc, etc, etc. So, so many names have been given to it. It is for that one single principle. Yes, that sense of I am. In Nisargadatta Maharaj's words and in Atmananda's words, I principle. Yeah. Words don't matter. Names do not matter. 